Hey, my name is Markus Fart, and I will talk about network analysis and graph processing using SAP HANA Cloud. Um, I will start with a um, general introduction how net what networks are and what you can do with it, and then we'll see how this all behaves uh, in SAP HANA. Uh, we will um, see some uh, um, example programs and queries, and, and uh, towards the end, we will talk about some advanced use cases. So um, let's start off with some um, general ideas. So networks are all around us. We do um, see social networks. So think about Facebook and the like. Of course, there are economic networks uh, where you have supplier relationships, where you um, um, produce stuff and sell it to your customers. There are utility networks. So think about gas pipelines um, and things like that. And um, there are communication networks um, and, and all of these types. Um, there are some um, classical um, patterns of analysis that go along with networks. So for example, um, understanding paths. Um, so how you, how you get from A to B or understanding the importance or the centrality of certain nodes in such a network. Um, many real world systems um, are networks. Um, and uh, you can think of um, vertices uh, and edges which make up your network. So, for example, there is Peter and there is Paul, which are two persons, which are two vertices in your network, and they are connected by an edge um, of type friendship or something like that. Um, where when you talk about uh, real-world systems, I usually talk about networks and um, then graph um, as uh, opposed to that is, is rather used to refer to the mathematical representation of such a network. So, so on the graph side, on the right-hand side, we, we talk about usually vertices and edges and you see an abstract representation of that real-world social network on the left-hand side. Um, if you look at networks in a little bit more detail, um, you usually, first of all, um, can think of how you model your network um, as a graph. And um, thinking about social networks, it might be very obvious that the vertices are representing the persons and the edges do represent the relationship between the persons. But um, in some other um, networks um, or graph data structures, it is not too obvious how you actually model your data. Um, so uh, think about um, an, an abstract process template. So like, um, for example, uh, an airplane at an airport um, uh, uh, is, is, is serviced or is, is turned around, as one would say. Um, so it's not too obvious in, in such a process, actually, which are the vertices and which are the edges. So there is some degree of freedom and the way you model your data also controls or has an impact on uh, what you can do with it later on. Looking at different types of graph, which you find in the literature or on, on Wikipedia, you usually see the idea, the distinction between directed and undirected graphs. So that, of course, relates to uh, the type of the edges. So there are some natural um, uh, examples for, for an undirected edge. So friendship usually is undirected. Um, or, or just have both directions, one could also say. So um, if, if I'm a friend to you, um, it's, it's natural that you are also a friend to me. Um, then there is an um, idea of a multigraph where you can have multiple edges um, between um, two nodes, um, which uh, may represent um, um, different uh, alternative routes or something like that. Then there is the um, idea of an heterogeneous graph um, where you do have different types of vertices in your network. So, for example, um, persons and organizations or companies which relate to each other. And usually these different type of nodes do carry different attributes which describe these nodes. So a person might have a birth date. And a company might have uh, a revenue size or something like that. Then there is an uh, idea of a, of a bipartite graph um, where you usually have two distinct um, set of vertices. So think about products and consumers. And you have edges only pointing from one set 
to the other. So a consumer is buying a product. And then finally, there's the idea of a weighted graph where the edges carry some attribute which represents um, cost or weight. So you could think about uh, um, a distance, a physical distance, um, or uh, a cost which is associated to, to go from one node to the other. Now, um, I already mentioned that there are, there are kind of standard network analysis patterns that we would you see and that you find in the literature. And um, as uh, some examples for these, um, if, you're, if you're looking at uh, link prediction um, approaches, uh, you find use cases like in, in product recommendation. So um, if you board product A and B, and there are many other people who bought product A and B and C, then a link prediction algorithm might recommend uh, product C to you, as there are many people out there who already bought that combination A, B, and C. Then, um, of course, if you're thinking about path and routes, I mean, we all know from, from the navigation systems in our cars how to calculate the shortest path or fastest path. There are other variants to finding path and routes, uh, for example, in, in sailing ships or in an open terrain where you are not bound to a street network. And there is um, the pattern of understanding centrality, so the importance of a node in a network. And one example here could, could be how to identify influencer in a social network. Um, then there is, of course, the idea to identify um, communities uh, in, for example, also a, a social network. So, for example, understand sets or clusters of scientific authors who share the same interest or who write very similar papers. And um, then uh, what you also see is, is uh, approaches that let you understand how data or information spreads over a network. Um, so, for example, how, how traffic um, spreads over a, a road network and how traffic might be impacted if you change the network. So, for example, if you, if you close down the road or how diseases spread uh, in a community or how information spreads in a communication network. As for these different um, analysis patterns, there are some well-known, well-understood standard algorithms. So, um, for example, for link prediction, there are a couple of um, well-understood approaches like um, common neighbors or Adamic ADA. Um, the link prediction algorithms are, are kind of local in the nature because you you're basically looking at or you're evaluating the neighborhood which is close to a node. So, for example, in the approach of common neighbors, you're essentially looking if, if you and I have a lot of common friends, then um, there's a high probability that you and I might also become friends in the future. So these link prediction algorithms are kind of evaluating the local neighborhood of a node, whereas, for example, if you're thinking about centrality, um, these are usually very global algorithms where you need to look at the, at the whole graph, essentially. So PageRank kind of um, analyzes uh, the connections between uh, web pages and, and ranks them accordingly. So um, it's, it's some form of a centrality measure. Um, there are other forms of centrality measures. For example, you could um, want to understand um, how many um, shortest paths between a network are going through a specific node. And the more shortest path are going through a specific node, the more important it is. So that makes sense if you are thinking about a road network and traffic and stuff like that. But um, the thing is, um, if you're looking at centrality measures in specific, there are a couple of 
um, there, there's a real set um, um, of well understood and, and proven centrality meshes. And it is not the case that, ah, okay, here's your graph, you just apply a standard algorithm and, and your problem is solved and you get a lot of insights and you're done. Usually what we do see in customer scenarios is um, that um, the standard algorithm kind of help you understanding the network and, and where, where the um, important information is, but but usually we also see that there are custom algorithms how you analyze um, your networks uh, in order to understand, for example, how how costs are distributed in a bill of material and 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 um, things of that nature. So what I'm saying here is there there are some standard graph algorithms, but um, these simply do not solve. All the problems that you encounter if you're looking at your data from a network perspective.